Hi, this is Dave in Western Pennsylvania, USA. Uh, I'm a chemistry professor and I work with uh, certain primary and secondary cells, batteries, uh, particularly interested in electrolyte composition. I work with deep eutectic ionic liquids. Anyway, here's a makeshift battery. Um, we would describe this as a zinc carbon battery. It's technically uh, it's zinc uh, manganese dioxide, of course, and uh, homemade little prototype. Um, I can't call it a dry cell because my electrolyte is an ionic liquid and it has virtually no vapor pressure at room temperature so it's not going to evaporate. It could leak um, but I can prevent that of course um, by sealing this with future uh, copies. Okay what I have is a uh, piece of zinc clean it up a little bit. You can get some zinc of course from uh, one and a half volt batteries inside a lantern, lantern battery, four by, four by uh, one and a half six volt uh, lantern. That's where we scavenge a lot of graphite and uh, carbon manganese dioxide and zinc. Anyway, cut out a section of zinc and uh, crimped it at the bottom so I could fold it up at the base and wrapped it around a double uh, A to get a rough idea of the length and width. And uh, I take a tea bag, cut it across, empty out the tea, and pack it with my uh, cathode. The cathode, of course, is going to be manganese dioxide and some activated carbon. I grind up the mixture in a mortar and pestle and uh, for every 9.7 grams of manganese dioxide I put 0 0.3 grams of the activated carbon and you're going to need uh, a current collector contact point and I use uh, the graphite lead uh, pencil uh, graphite uh, technically and uh, you can burn some pencils to get it too and I take a section of that, put it in with tea bag with the uh, cathode, and uh, you're good to go. The uh, sacrificial anode is the zinc. So I get that uh, wrapped up pretty good in the tea bag, and I put a little section of this, looks like polyurethane material that I get at the dollar store. Just uh, wrap it around the uh, paper towel so I don't get a short, prevent a short. And I pack it in there pretty good. Maybe you could see the uh, graphite contact out the top. And uh, I try different electrolytes, ionic liquids. This is a particular one I'm working on right now. It's a light yellow liquid made from livalinic acid and choline chloride which is the latter of B vitamin. I have videos that show you how to make them. There's also a YouTube video that shows you how to make an ionic liquid from urea, choline chloride and uh, ethylene glycol but ethylene glycol, a component of antifreeze, is poisonous. Livalinic acid that I like to use here is uh, derived from cellulose and getting cheaper all the time, but you may not be able to get a handle on it. Livalinic acid. You may not be able to find it. Um, these ionic liquids I work with remain liquids to 20, 30, or sometimes lower, uh, 20, 30 below zero Celsius. And as I said, they're not going to evaporate. And with an eyedropper, I just... Uh, Put a few drops in, get it soaked up pretty good. Let's see what the voltage is right now. I'm interested in the self-discharge over a period of weeks, among other things, as well as the, of course, power output. I'll use a Jewel Thief to get it down to 0 0.8 volts. Okay, let's get this uh, tripod set up here. Let's see if I can get you a view of it. All right, of the multimeter. 
and uh, let's start off with the voltage. Let's see what we're going to get here. 1.33 volts. Uh, preliminary studies show that it drops from about 1.4 to 1.33, 1.3, and then it holds its own pretty good. Let me uh, give you an idea of the short circuit. Now you can go to the 1 o'clock position on the multimeter and that will put a little bit of a load on it. Let's see what I get there. Now that is for a one and a half volt. Four milliamps would be a nice output. I'm getting 2.4, but remember I'm not at one and a half volts. And if I do a short circuit, I'll go to the 20 scale. I'll do a short circuit. I'm getting about uh, eight, eight and a quarter uh, milliamps. Short circuit. Let me go back to the open voltage again. I'll go to the 20 scale. See uh, if it goes back up. Yeah, there it goes. Going back up. So there you have it. Um, it's about the size of a double uh, A, and I got to make about 10 or 20 of them so I could do a little bit of fundamental statistics because they're makeshift, and I want to get an idea of the range of uh, voltages before I begin my study of different electrolytes ionic liquids. This is an easy one you can make at home. Thanks for watching. I'll keep you posted on uh, performances. Bye now.